Hi, welcome to lesson number 12. This is the first of our five demos. And in this lesson, we're uh, going to create a back to top button. Now, uh, I'm sure you've seen this around. It's a very common pattern. And the way this works, basically, you have a, a web page and when you scroll past a certain point, uh, you'll get a little back to top button somewhere on the page. Usually it's on the, uh, it's on the bottom part of the page. And when you click it, you're taken back up to, uh, to the top of the page. So let's go ahead and see how we can create uh, something like that using pure um, or vanilla JavaScript if you want. Now, taking a look at the uh, markup here, uh, we have a header with an ID of top. We're going to use this ID uh, to tell our script where we need to go back to. Uh, then we have our main content with a bunch of paragraphs and finally a footer. And in the footer, we have an anchor tag with an ID of back to top. This is our button. As far as styling is concerned, um, we just have some generic demo style here. Nothing, uh, nothing fancy really. But what we're interested in is this back to top button, right? So its position is fixed. So no matter how or no matter where we scroll, it stays in the same position. It's in the bottom right corner, three M's from each side. Uh, it's uh, white with a 0.9 in the alpha channel. It's set to inline block. Uh, currently, it has an opacity of zero, so we cannot see it. And uh, we also have a class visible, which gives it an opacity one. So what we need to do basically is when we scroll past a certain point in our page, we're going to add that class to the button, making it visible. And we also have to listen to the click event on the button and make uh, our page scroll all the way back to the top. Now, I'm going to write the script right here on the bottom of the page. And I'm going to start by defining some variables. And then what we're going to do is calculate the document height. And we're going to set the offset to a quarter of that value. And finally, we're going to add event listeners for scroll and click. Right now for variables, we're going to target the, the button. So BTT back to top. We're going to say document get element by ID back to top. Then we're going to get the body to document body doc lm. That's going to be document document element will uh, be needing this when we calculate the height of our page. Then we're going to set the offset to 100, for example, and two more variables will declare scroll position and doc height. Now let's calculate the document height. We're going to say doc height equals math dot max. Uh, basically math dot max will take a bunch of values and it's going to return uh, the um, the biggest one, the maximum of those values. And the reason we're doing this is because uh, different browsers will look at uh, a document height differently. So for example, Firefox is going to uh, have a different syntax to get the document height. A WebKit is going to have another one. So just to make sure we, um, uh, we cover as much, as many browsers uh, as we need, we're doing this math max, and we're going to pass in the following values body dot scroll height, body dot offset height, doc lm client height, and scroll height. And finally, we're going to get the offset height. Now we'll do a quick check if document height is different than undefined, which means if math max actually returned something which means if we actually have a, uh, a height value, then we're going to set the offset to doc height divided by four. Uh, this value 100 is just a um, uh, is just a fallback, right? In case doc height actually turns out undefined for some reason, then we do have something to fall back on. Next up, we're going to add the scroll event listener. And actually before that, let's go ahead and uh, do a quick refresh here and go to our console and call out 
called the offset. And as you can see, the offset is 737.5. Now, which means our script will be executed after we scroll past 737.5. Now, for the scroll event listener, we're going to do window, add event listener. Yeah, we're going to listen for scroll and we're going to have a function. We're going to get the scroll position equals to body dot scroll top or in case that's not valid, doc lm dot scroll top. Again, this is for various browsers. And then we're going to say BTT class name equals to if the scroll position is higher than the offset, then we're going to add a class of visible. Uh, oops, sorry. It's the other way around. Otherwise, we're going to add nothing. So that's what we're doing here. Basically, this is the uh, ternary operator, if you remember, or the conditional operator. Uh, we're checking if the scroll position is higher than the offset. So basically, if we passed that threshold when we scrolled, we add the class of visible to the to the button to the BTT. Otherwise, we add nothing to the class name. Okay, so let's have a quick look. Refresh and let's see, there it is. So when we scroll, yeah, past that point, we make the button visible. And when we go back up, we're hiding it. Okay, now let's uh, actually make this button work. So when we click it, we want it to go to the very top. So uh, we're going to say add click event listener. BTT add event listener, click again, function event. First thing we'll do is say event prevent default. Uh, and that's to make sure that uh, the button or in our case, it's an anchor tag, you know, it doesn't go anywhere. That's what this function is doing. And then we're uh, going to check if our browser is Firefox, then we need to set the scroll top value in a different way. So uh, what are we going to do here is define another variable called is Firefox. And is Firefox Actually, this is very, uh, very easy to do. Uh, we got to check for the navigator user agent. So uh, let me actually, I'm going to say true here, just so we have valid code. But I want to open the inspector here. And what I'm going to do is say navigator dot user agent. And navigator user agent is going to give us this bit. Yeah. And an easy way to check if this is Firefox, well, it says Firefox right here. So all we got to do is compare that string to the word Firefox. So is Firefox will be equal to the following navigator dot user agent dot. We're going to use a method called to lowercase, which will take a string, it's going to make it lowercase. And then I'm going to say index of Firefox is higher than minus one. All right, so if you don't understand what happened here, let me tell you. Uh, navigator user agent will give us that string you saw in the console. To lowercase is going to uh, make everything lowercase. And then index of Firefox basically means at which position is the word Firefox in that string. And if it returns a position that's higher than minus one, it means the string, uh, the word Firefox is within that string. Otherwise, it isn't there. And this is a comparison. So it returns true or false. So coming back down here, we're going to say if is Firefox, then we're going to say doc elm. Uh, sorry, scroll top equals zero. Otherwise, we're going to set body scroll top equals to zero. So now refresh 
And when I'm down here, I click the button. It's going to take me back to, uh, to the very top. And now that I think of it, um, I actually used, I actually said in the beginning that we're going to use this ID to bring us back to the top. Not really necessary, to be honest, because uh, the way we're getting to top is we're setting this property here, scroll top equals zero. So we might as well just get rid of this unless it has um, value in, uh, in styling, which I don't really think it does. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we can actually get rid of this. That's about it for our button. Now, a uh, small but interesting project is a uh, text box that supports auto-completion. Uh, that will be demo number two and will be coming in the next lesson.